Welcome! So I've got nine vinyl records to show you today. So a lot, probably that's the most I've ever shown in one video. But the reason is it's a complete collection of every single album from one particular artist. An artist, I wouldn't class him as a solo artist. It's more like a collaborative project that I've loved since I was a young child in the early 90s. And um, I did used to have one of his albums on cassette. I'm talking about Michael Cretu, better known to worldwide music fans as Enigma. Now I've got four albums to show you here that I've had in my collection now for over a month. And I've listened to them all. And uh, I'm going to show you these in a bit more detail and you'll see why. And then there's a couple of mail openings to do afterwards as well. So, um, first couple of albums I'm going to show you from Enigma were purchases from Discogs Marketplace um, from two separate sellers, if memory serves. One was from Russia and one was from Turkey. Turkey, eh? Turkey! What a load of rubbish! Turkey? Well, if it's so bleeding good, how can we only have it once a year? Turkey? It's just a fat bastard chicken, that's all it is! But I can't remember which was which, so uh, we'll just get going with uh, the first one. Now, as you can see, it's got a number six in Roman numerals on the bottom. That means this is Enigma's sixth studio album, and this is the one I always struggle pronouncing. This is A Posteriori, or Posteriori. I'm sure I'm butchering that. I think it's Latin or possibly Italian. So, uh, as you can see, this has been opened. I have listened to it. Probably my favourite of this four that I'm going to show you, actually, in terms of music. But you're going to see the reason I'm going to show you this and uh, the next three. This was in a 2018 reissue campaign, The Colours of Enigma, where Enigma reissued all nine of their albums and they're all different coloured records. So uh, these were quite expensive to get because these are now, what, three years old, deleted. So aftermarket sellers are bumping the price up. I can't remember how much this one was or the next one. Uh, I just know they were both from international sellers on Discogs. But I want to show you the disc here for... I'm not going to try and pronounce it again. I'm just going to say Enigma's sixth album. Look at that. Gorgeous pink record there. Probably cost me around £40 factoring in international postage, I think. That's album number six, so there's plenty more to go. Such as this one. So this one is the other one from Discogs. Either from Russia or from Turkey, as I say. I can't remember which was which. This one is their eighth album. I believe this is their most recent studio album. Or his most recent studio album. Technically Enigma, at least nowadays, is really one man and a bunch of collaborators. Uh, but this is The Fall of a Rebel Angel. I think this came out originally 2016. Then, this being in the Colours of Enigma campaign, uh, it was reissued a couple of years later. I will show you this, so it kind of gives a hint as to what the colour of the disc will be when you look at the text and the Roman numeral on here. And this, not too dissimilar from the last one, but more of a sort of darker pink, or kind of like a purple, almost, really. But, I um, don't know how well this one's coming across on camera. To my eye, it looks really nice and vibrant. You know I'm into coloured records, coloured discs. And um, Enigma is an act that I've been wanting to collect again. I say again, I've never really collected them in the past. But I have had an Enigma album. And my mother had an Enigma album, but I'll be showing you which ones those are later on. So two in the Colours of Enigma campaign, the Colours of Enigma set there. And there's two more here. Now, these ones were from eBay. These were both from the same seller. And I do remember more or less what the price was of these. It was like under £100 for both. So you're talking almost £50 a record. More than what I like to spend normally. But as I say, these are deleted. They were brand new. So I was a little bit more comfortable paying high end for records that were new and sealed at the time of purchase anyway. And also, I was able to get like so many months interest-free credit 
on the purchase with PayPal as well, so that took the sting out of it somewhat. And the albums here is number five in the Colours of Enigma set. This one is Voyager. Almost called it Voyager, but um, it looks French to me, the title, so Voyager. So the fifth Enigma album. As I get the inner sleeve out, you're probably going to guess what colour this one is. Oh yeah, I would class that as orange, I think. Like I say, that's the only downside to showing these sort of records on a YouTube video. They never tend to quite end up looking like how they do to the naked eye. But if you're a record collector and you have bought coloured and patterned records, then you know, you know how cool they are and uh, you get the point really. So that was album number five, Voyager, or Voyager. By the way, Voyager, I'm trying to remember what year that came out. I think that might have been around 2003, that one. And um, last one in this Colours of Enigma campaign, and the only other one out of the four that I was able to afford, also from the same eBay seller as Voyager. This one is their seventh album, Seven Lives, Many Faces. So uh, judging from the text and the number there, I think we know what colour this is going to be. Love the inner sleeves for these as well. Yeah, this is a really nice kind of sky blue, would you say? Light blue. Cyan, is cyan the right word? Or teal? I don't know. Colour experts, correct me in the comments, please. But there we are. So I wanted to show you them. I've been holding on to these for quite some time. Just waiting for the rest of my mail today to have arrived. Got four of these 2018 coloured editions of Enigma's back catalogue. However, there were still five more albums in the Colours of Enigma lineup, and no matter how many times I searched online, looked on eBay, Discogs, independent record stores, websites, either couldn't find them, the other albums, the first four studio albums, and the greatest hits to save my life, or if I did find the odd one here and there, it was just, I mean, one of the albums, I think someone was asking £200 for it, it was no way just to say, oh, I've got a coloured version of it, am I going to pay £200 for something that would have been, what, 20-something when it was released, only like three years ago. However, the good news is, Enigma have done a similar campaign this year. They've re-released, once again, all nine of their albums, in similar kind of format the only difference is the 2021 campaign it's just standard black vinyl they're not colored records so i managed to pre-order the five that i need from wh smith so they're all sort of around 21 22 pound each apart from the greatest hits one that i'll show you in a bit that's a two disc effort and that was like 26 27 uh, for some reason, these have come today in two different packages. I think because one of them, they weren't sure it was in stock with the rest. So uh, I'll open uh, this one first. I know there's only one in here. Yeah, it's got the pull-down tab that always just tears up in my hand. And what we've got here, just check, I think this will be, uh, yeah, that's like a return label. And what we've got here is... Enigma's very first debut album from 1990, and it's called 1990 AD, although it's always um, credited in the Roman numeral style. But yeah, so uh, this is probably, arguably, going to be the era of Enigma that most people are familiar with because it features their worldwide number one hit, Sadness Part 1, from 1990. Um, I remember hearing that track when I was, what, only just 10 years old, and um, it was like nothing I'd ever heard before. I never had this album. There is a couple of albums that I am familiar with in the next package to show you. So yeah, we've got a hype sticker on there. They've called this the Monochrome Studio Album Series. So yeah, it's the... And I like the fact these sleeves do sort of match up. It still looks like it's all part of the same set, even though these four are in the 2018 coloured set. This one, I mean, they're calling it Monochrome. But it just means like they've just re-released them, but on black records. Normal discs, as I would call them. 
But yeah, 1990 AD. Don't think I've ever heard this album in full, but I'm familiar with at least a couple of the singles on here. Most notably Sadness Part 1. Uh, I'm not going to get this sealed as um, we're just going to be looking at black vinyl for the next uh, few records, obviously. This one's going to have four albums in it because I pre-ordered five out of the nine that I wanted. Let's see if we can get this open relatively successfully. Oh yeah, that were easier than it looked. Right, so I don't think these are going to be in any particular order in the package, but it doesn't matter. Let's grab all these. Alright, so uh, just take them from the top. Will the return label to chuck away down there? This one is Enigma's third studio album, another French title, Le Ra et Mort Vive le Roi. Ra, I can't say it. Um, now then, my mother had this album on CD. In fact, I might have actually bought it for her as like a birthday or Christmas present back in. This came out, I think this was maybe 96. There will be some copyright detail on here, but it's very small text and with me ring light, I can't read it right now. So I do know this album. I fact, I probably listened to this CD more than my mum did, as she liked it. She likes Enigma, but um, I was quite a fan of this album. I thought it was pretty good, even though you could argue it wasn't massively successful. I think Enigma, by the mid 90s, they were still doing well in continental Europe and still having the odd single reach the UK top 40, but um, generally sort of they'd peaked a couple of years earlier with an album that I'll be showing you in a minute. Happy to have this in my collection on record for the first time, and I know there's some tracks on here that I love. Excellent stuff. Right, next one. Now then, next one. This was the more expensive one because this is the two-disc set, and this is Love, Sensuality, Devotion, The Greatest Hits. So, a little bit unnecessary, maybe, to get this with all the other studio albums, but um, there may be one or two exclusive tracks on here. I honestly can't remember. I'm not sure. I'd have thought there'd be, like, an exclusive single, at least, on here. There again, the hype sticker, but we haven't got the particular colour pattern or the colour um, association that Enigma did in 2018. But doesn't matter to me. I'm just really happy that I was able to get all the rest that I needed for the Enigma collection. Brand new, all at once. So, uh, yeah, it's got all the big singles. Um, I think this album came out, it was either late 90s or early noughties. So it's not going to feature some of the very later singles from the later albums. But it certainly has the big hits, Sadness Part 1, Return to Innocence and um, some other ones that I think probably did better on continental Europe than over here in the UK. But, um, yep. If I was getting all the studio albums, then I might as well be hung for sheep as for a lamb, as my mother would say, and get the two-disc greatest hits as well. Oh, is this a... Uh, no, I don't think this is a gatefold sleeve. Still got a couple more to look at. This one, as you can see from Ivy, is Enigma's fourth studio album, The Screen Behind the Mirror. I've not heard this album before. Um, I think this one would have been 1999, 2000, so kind of turn of the millennium. Um, I may have heard one or two of the singles on here, possibly, but never heard the album, never owned it. So, just happy to get that into the collection, as I'm delighted to get them all into the collection. And um, have a full Enigma library on wax. And the final one, now this is the one that I mentioned earlier, that I had on cassette when I was a teenager. It would have come out in 1993. Enigma's second album, The Cross of Changes. Great album. I think um, at the time I was a little bit disappointed with the album because I was expecting a lot of the tracks to be kind of like Sadness Part 1, which was some three years previously, and um, this was a bit of a different vibe really. This had more sort of world music kind of samples and influences on. I mean, Return to Innocence is the obviously the big single and maybe their most well-known single out of everything they've ever done. And uh, that didn't have all the Gregorian chanting on that Sadness did, but um, I think the famous chorus in Return to Innocence, I believe it's like a Taiwanese 
Aboriginal chant, I think. I did like the album. Like I said, it was a little different to what I expected it to be. But um, I was still an Enigma fan. I didn't collect them. Um, otherwise, I would have you know, probably had most of these albums, certainly the early ones, on cassette or CD or whatever in the 1990s, whereas uh, I personally only owned this one for my collection. And then, like I say, my mother had the third album. But yeah, nice to finish on there. Another for the Enigma collection. So that is a full Enigma studio album and greatest hits collection. Hope you enjoyed looking at them. Nice kind of uniform set. All the sleeves are designed in the same sort of way. Uh, they've all got the same hype stickers on. As I say, these ones have already been listened to. I can now file these away properly in the collection. But um, I've got these five here for the monochrome reissue series that I will be listening to, well, from now until whenever it is I finish them. So thank you very much for watching this Enigma vinyl special with me. I want to say a big thank you, as I always do, to my subscribers and my patrons. My Patreon link and all other interesting links relating to me and this channel, they're all down in the description text box. I'm going to go now. What else but listen to probably start with 1990 AD, the debut album from Enigma. Do it chronologically and um, I'll give my uh, coloured editions, my expensive, not really worth the money editions, another spin soon as well. And I do hope that all of you will join me again next time for my next epic bumper vinyl record unboxing mail opening showcase video cheers everyone see ya